have uh, Kid Sundays, where the youth will speak once in a while. Uh, so now we don't have it for like one and a half years. So we thought, okay, we'll give some opportunity to our young men. Um, yeah, so, so we did the same topic. So you can hear my version on the same topic. <laughs> so uh, the topic is same, it's about justification. So let us look at the definition. Justification is declaring a person to be just or righteous. It is a legal term signifying acquittal. So um, if I say uh, which is the, the most, the topic you love the most, I will say from the whole Bible I will love the justification because uh, it shows God's compassion. And also uh, for me the greatest comfort is that it, it totally hinges on God's character which I can trust. If I have to do many things to be justified, and if it was depending on my faithfulness, I am sure I will fail. But I am so glad that it is, it is hinging on, only on him. So, um, you know, even in the, in the earth, uh, the president can forgive and declare pardon. And uh, uh, Samsung's chairman was pardoned like nine years back because uh, he was to bring Pyeongchang Olympics to Korea. So he, declared, he did uh, some tax, some issues, and uh, the president has pardoned. And even Trump, he has, uh, according to internet, he has pardoned nine people. And uh, in the last century, the American president has pardoned around 20,000 people. So even in a legal term, presidential pardon is possible. And uh, only thing, it has to come from the right authority. So in case of presidential pardon, they can go to the court and uh, it can be argued in the court. But so far, none of the pardons has been reversed because the constitution gave the right to the president to forgive. So uh, according to the law, the president can issue a full pardon, reversing a criminal conviction as if it has never happened. A pardon can be issued from the time an offense is committed. Uh, the president can issue a reprieve or reduce the, uh, reduce the punishment or anything he can do. Uh, and I don't think anyone who has been pardoned when then did the same thing back because it is, it is declared publicly that this guy is wrong, but we are pardoning him. And uh, in, the, in, in the court, normally, um, uh, normally when somebody is declared uh, guilty, he will be punished. But only in the case of Jesus we know, it, he was declared innocent and then punished, just to remember. So why do I say about presidential pardon? Because our pardon is, our justification is presidential. So I, I want to, I, I was uh, preparing the slides and I wanted, I wanted to put it, uh, I want to put the title as how many types of sinners? How many types of people? I was writing the people, then I, then I thought every person is a sinner, so I just put how many types of sinners. So including me, uh, I will come in one of the category and uh, I want to be in the last category. So there are maybe many more types, don't worry about it, but let us try to fall into the category which God justifies. So many people they are there who look righteous, but before God's eyes they are not. Some people are open sinners and they try to, they sin but they try to put a good face. Some know that they are sinners and struggle against sin. They, they don't want to sin. There are some people who really try to struggle against sin and uh, God in his mercy will bring them to, to himself. I, I was maybe one of that person when I was a young man, when I was young and in the school. Uh, I don't want to sin but uh, I couldn't resist sin. And then there are some people who think they are perfect but they are not. Some think they are the worst and they have no hope. There are people who have lost hope and uh, they, don't, they think they, 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 they can't bring their life up. And um, the last type is some may know they are sinners and trust God there for their righteousness. So let us try to fall in that. And uh, let us look at uh, uh, one scripture in Luke 18, 9. Everybody knows about it. And let us try to find two keys in this scripture which brings a different result. So let us uh, read, uh, maybe you can read on the screen, Luke 18, 9. And also he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortionists, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. See, this man was very thankful to God, but indirectly he was praising himself, right? Like us. I fast twice a week. I give tithes to all. I, tithe, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector standing afar off would not do, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, 
and beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and who, he who humbles himself will be exalted. So I will say uh, the two keys are humility and crying out. So when we come to God, if we cry out, God, please justify me, he's faithful to justify you. Um, it is, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's faithful and he will do that. And Jesus, it is Jesus' own words, he says, he, he went back justified. It's not only in one incident he forgives, in many incidents in the New Testament we see the same thing. So two keys, humility and cry out to the Lord. And from this picture, you can make out what is this incident, right? It's Jesus sitting there and writing on the sand. And there is a lady and there is the Pharisees who says um, they want to, they, Jesus, they are asking Jesus, what should we do with her? And uh, you know, uh, uh, the Bible says she was caught in the act of, uh, in the act of adultery. So now the number one question is, where is the man? Why they didn't bring the man? And, uh, and this lady is silent, and Jesus is writing on the, writing on the uh, sand. And he's, Jesus said, uh, if any of you have not seen, just let him put the throne. I think if one person has put a throne, uh, put a throne a stone, everybody would have stoned her to death. Maybe Jesus' presence was so awesome that they couldn't do it. And, and the thing is, when one person throws, everybody will start to think that, okay, he's, he's, his standard is this, I know. So I will also match that stand, so I can throw a stone. So it would have happened. So anyway, God's presence was, Jesus himself was there. So they couldn't do that. And you can see a small photo of a person there. His name is Ron Charles. He's an American. Um, he is considered one of the thousand greatest Americans ever lived. Uh, his name is Ron Charles by the Cambridge University. He's uh, listed as one of the thousand greatest Americans. Uh, he was an architect and he built, uh, uh, he designed one stadium in Germany, one airport in Saudi, and has got uh, like six PhDs. And, uh, and uh, then he went to Egypt as a missionary. And in Egypt, he worked 10 years as a missionary and he couldn't bring even one person to Christ. After 10 years, he said to the Lord, Lord, if you, are, if you are not bringing one soul to me tonight, I will go back. Because he has done everything and he couldn't do, find any. He was incredibly smart. He went as an archaeologist uh, and, uh, because he wanted to get a mission visa and, uh, and he worked as an archaeologist. Did, he was, at the same time, he was doing a lot of research on history. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and then one day he said, Lord, unless you bring one person to Christ today, I am going back. And that night, he, was, uh, he took a taxi and he started sharing the gospel with the taxi driver. And uh, the taxi driver said, come, come with me to my, my tribe. He was a Bedouin. And he took them somewhere inside the desert to a tribe. And uh, that night, he shared the gospel to everyone. And the whole tribe came to Christ. And, uh, and, uh, and then he continued to work there. He had some contact with uh, uh, Egypt's uh, ministers in the, in the, in the Mubarak, right? Before Sai, who was uh, 20 years, there was a president in Egypt, and he was close to that. And uh, he could access, he could support many Christians in the garbage cities. And he was speaking in Sharjah and Dubai in some uh, churches in Indian languages. So I was a translator to him. So one day after a, after a meeting, uh, he couldn't go back home because it rained. And uh, he had to stay with us for one night. So it was maybe God sent. And, uh, and he has written many books. And, and one of the research he did is he found each miracle in the Bible and tried to research about the, what happened to them after the miracle. See, when, when Jesus and the, and the gospel writers, they took the incidents to write in the scriptures, they took which are very prominent, which are known to everybody, uh, so that uh, it will not be questioned. So he did a research on this lady, why this lady was picked by John to put in the scripture. And, and we know about the lady who was, um, uh, who was having like this for 37 years. And he found why that lady was put in the scripture and what happened to her afterwards. So about this lady, he did a research and he found that uh, from outside the Bible, according to him, he found that she was the daughter of a Roman general, one very top ranking Roman general. And the boy who committed adultery was one of the son of a high, high ranking priest in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Pharisee. So that's why the boy is not there in the picture and the lady is there. And when this, they were questioning Jesus, 
uh, when they were questioning Jesus, the Roman generals were standing maybe hundreds of meters away with a big army. And then the other side uh, is the Pharisees and Moses' law. If J Jesus says, okay, don't, sto uh, don't throw stones there, they could throw stones at Jesus because he's uh, talking against Moses' law. If, the, if, uh, if Jesus say, okay, stone this lady, then the Roman general will come and catch Jesus. So it was a perfect trap. Either the Roman general will, will catch Jesus or the Pharisees will kill Jesus. So it was, it was trapped like that. And, uh, but Jesus says, okay, whoever is not sin, the sin, sin. But the interesting thing is, what happened to her after that? Her name is Livia, and uh, this Roman general and the daughter moved to Damascus. And uh, there, she set up a church. And that church stood for 2,000 years. And uh, uh, she's known as Livia of Damascus, and that's what, in that book. So, um, so let us, when God forgives somebody, it, it, he has a plan for them to do something really marvelous. And uh, when, uh, when, so when God's, God justifies us, what happened to us? It brings in gratitude in our heart. Normal people will have gratitude to Jesus because he has forgiven and he has been, we have been acquitted. So I was talking to a friend yesterday in India and they, they were talking about one young man, 30 year old young man, which was, uh, which was in the church. So this young man was recently found Christ. He was a Hindu and uh, he had a huge debt when he found Christ. So what he does every day is he, he cycles 60 kilometers morning to and comes and studies the Bible. And in the night, he does a night uh, food stall. He's a very good cook. He night a uh, good food stall and he repays his loan back. So remember every day riding 60 kilometers to study the Bible and doing all the hard work because they are so grateful that Jesus has forgiven their sins. And uh, we, when we come to Jesus and when God forgives us, we see the standards. We may fail again 100 times more, but it will change us because we are so thankful to the Lord that he forgave us. And in Philippians 3, Paul is writing after 24 years of his salvation, he is writing this. It indeed, I, I, it indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may again be found in him, and not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. Paul is writing, say, I have tried to be perfect according to the law, but now I don't want to be uh, perfect anymore like that. I want only the righteousness of Christ. He's saying, I don't want to be righteous according to the law. I want to be righteous, which comes through Christ. And now the question is whether God did this in the Old Testament. Yes, the, he has done many things. And it was a plan which God has declared in the New Old Testament that I am going to justify many. And uh, about David, we know, uh, we know very well. He committed adultery, covered it up, murdered the men whose wife he slept with, then lied about it even to God's prophet. But the but Bible says God has forgiven him. And uh, in Psalm 35, David is writing, And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. So David knew he had nothing in himself to praise, but his righteousness which has put on him. And in Romans 4, 7, again from Psalm, it, it is quoted, Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. It is Lord's hand. So now, the, see, in, in a, when a president forgives somebody, many people can raise question. But when God forgives uh, somebody, can anyone be questioned? So, uh, so imagine God forgives us and somebody questions God. Maybe when we look at God's character in the Bible, he's somebody who cannot be questioned. See, when God introduces himself to Moses, he says, I am who I am. And he's so bold. He's not, uh, uh, he's not a, uh, a feeble character to whom anybody can ask questions. And in Jeremiah 23, 5, it says, Behold, the days are coming, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. Now this is his name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteousness. Remember, when we come to Christ, the Lord is our righteousness. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Jesus has shown a few times that he is going to forgive, and he took any risk for that. And about the, this, this man who was, who was lying, 
uh, Jesus said, okay, uh, healing him is very easy for me, but I forgive his sins. And, uh, and that is difficult and I am doing that. And, and in the same chapter, I think Jesus was, they were angry and he wanted to, they wanted to throw him. So let us again remember that our pardon is truly presidential. So why I love justification? Because it's something very simple. It says, I am a sinner and I can come to God as a sinner and I can confess my sins to him. I can humble myself and trust on his character to be justified. And, uh, and it hangs on his divine character. So I can, be, I, can, I can have rest in that. In Romans 3.21 it says, But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. So maybe many times we will be tempted to forget that we have been forgiven and we have been acquitted and we have been justified because of God's mercy. So can we read this song when we finish? Uh, maybe you, all of you know this song. Uh, I, I can't sing, so let us read. Why me, Lord, what have I ever done to deserve even one of the pressures I have known? Tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth loving you or the kindness you have shown? Lord, help me, Jesus, I have wasted it so. Help me, Jesus, I know what I am. Now that I know what I have, what I have need you, help me, Jesus, my soul is in your hand. Tell me, Lord, if you think there is a way, I can try to repay all I have taken from you. Maybe, Lord, I can show someone else what I have been through myself on my way back to you. So let us, let us also tell someone else that Jesus has forgiven us. I want to summarize. Deep down, many times, as Christians, we say, I have not prayed enough, I have not fasted enough, I have not given enough, I have not been diligent enough. So our flesh tries to help God instead of simply trusting Him. No, I, I know all these are true, but we don't have to be discouraged because we can trust in the Lord. And, and, and that trust and that faith will start to produce something in us, brings, a, grat, uh, brings gratitude in us, and also it brings, it, it will, it will, uh, when we will become much more compassionate to others. You remember the parable Jesus has spoken about the man who has forgiven much, and he, he said he will love God more. So let us, let us accept forgiveness and let us forgive everyone else also around. And many times in our Christian walk, we walk with Christ for 25 years, and then we, we might forget that we have been forgiven. But let us not forget that uh, it is a gift. It comes unnamed, undeserved, and unmerited. And, and uh, let us not try so hard that we, we fall from Christ. The, the Bible could not make this matter any clearer. Righteousness is believing the promise of God. Unrighteousness is unbelief, doubting His promises, and trying to do it ourselves. We are accepted by God only because we are in Christ. God accepts only one person, Jesus, and in turn, we are accepted because we believe in His finished work for us on the cross. With justification, God has not only is forgiven you, He has a plan for your sanctification, and He has a plan for your future, just like we heard about Livia. And, uh, and um, her father, uh, Livia's father, the Roman general, he declared Damascus an international city. So that even until now, it is an international city where the Bible can be printed for the whole Middle East. Uh, and uh, and uh, a Muslim can convert inside Damascus and he won't be killed. If a Muslim convert to Christ outside Damascus, he will be killed. No one will ever question him for justifying you. It's truly presidential. He, when after talking to Livia, when Jesus forgave her, the last sentence Jesus said, go and sin no more. I believe the gratitude for justification will drive us into sanctification. So let's pray. Father, we come before you. And Lord, we praise you that, Lord, you have brought us to your table and you have declared us righteousness. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for the hope we have in you, Lord. And we trust in you. Lord, today we lift up our eyes and we say that, Lord, we need you more than any other day. Lord, cleanse us and, and clean us and make us righteous, Lord. And also we pray that, Lord, your sanctification will start in us and it will complete in us. Lord, Lord, we thank you for the life you have given us. Help us to walk every day that we will be closer to you. In Jesus' precious name we pray.